It's expected to go into effect in January. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. The second measure on gun safety storage could also become law after the city attorney drafts an ordinance and the city council votes on it. If both measures are passed, Los Angeles will be the first city in the state to have both laws on the books. This next story is about a law passed by the voters in 2013 limiting pot shops in the city and whether a medical marijuana delivery business accessible on your smartphone violates that law. Gil Reyes reports. This is Nesdrop's app. It offers the opportunity to seek alcohol or marijuana. Yes, medical marijuana delivered right to your doorstep. The company Nestrop launches a mobile app that sells and delivers pot to patients in the L.A. area. Products with catchy names like Full Melt CO2, Ganja Goddess, and Ganja Glycerin. But L.A. City Attorney is putting his foot down. A mobile app that would purport to facilitate the delivery of marijuana we allege is not lawful under Proposition D, and we're hoping that a court agrees with us. Proposition D, passed by voters in 2013, limits the number of pot dispensaries to about 100 citywide. L.A. City Attorney Mike Fewer also says under Prop D, only patients and caregivers are allowed to deliver pot. His office has filed a lawsuit against the company Nestrop in hopes of ending deliveries. But the company says their operation is legitimate and that it only sells medical marijuana to patients who need it and have the paperwork to prove it. Well, we'll see what a court says about that. We are confident that the law is very clear on its face. Nestrop, based in Los Angeles, also sells and delivers alcohol. The company has declined to comment on the city attorney's lawsuit. In downtown L.A., Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. The city attorney's office says it's shut down more than 400 illegal dispensaries since June. That's when Prop D went into effect. After that Thanksgiving turkey, did you get to do some holiday shopping? City leaders hoped that you did and that you supported locally owned businesses. Rasha Goel reports. Shop locally is the message Mary Otson, a bake shop owner in Studio City, is sending to Angelinos on the day after Black Friday. It's called Small Business Saturday and a chance to help promote local businesses. I love Small Business Saturday. I think it, uh, the advertising of Small Business Saturday allows me to reach out farther than our community to come here, spend the day on Ventura Boulevard and shop locally. Among the Angelinos coming out to promote Small Business Saturday was our very own Mayor Eric Garcetti who dropped by in Studio City. When it's a local owner, more of that, uh, the revenue is going to come here locally. So when you spend locally, it has a recycling effect. That, that dollar may be recycled four or five times more because the local owner will spend that money in his or her own neighborhood again and again and again. The concept was first celebrated in 2010 and conceived by American Express to promote shopping at all small local businesses. And for niche shops like the Amoeba Music Store in Hollywood, it's a much needed day to keep the business running. This business is thriving purely on an independent level. It doesn't even exist on a corporate big box level anymore. So we're, we're what's left for a reason. We're the ones who are doing it right all along. It's really important, especially a place like this. There's not too many left. It's like the only place you can come that's a, a treasure trove of music. And small businesses aren't just limited to the stores. You can also support small businesses by having a meal at a local mom and pop restaurant after a day of shopping locally. Shopping on Small Business Saturday helps create jobs, boost the economy, and preserves neighborhoods. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. And speaking of supporting small businesses, that's what a new business center in South L.A. is doing. Yana Kay tells us how both job seekers and small business owners are benefiting from this new resource. These South Los Angeles community members don't have to go very far to get information on business services, thanks to the opening of a new business resource center in the 9th District. The center is a collaboration between large corporations, small businesses, nonprofits, and other community-based organizations. We're talking about uh, delivering services to those who are looking for jobs, for those who want to create jobs, those who want to expand their businesses. Some of those services include providing technical assistance, how to write a business and marketing plan, and expert advice on how to expand a business. I believe that it will really help the businesses to thrive and to grow 
and the new ones to come alive and it will help improve our community. A ribbon cutting was held to welcome the new center. Community leaders say it's been a long time coming. Something that's been desperately needed for a long period of time, a focus down here in the community uh, where people in the community can, can stay in their comfort zone and still get the resources that they need. Resources that officials hope will not only benefit business owners, but the community as well. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. The LAPD is getting into the holiday spirit with fundraising events and donation drives benefiting charities, but it's also offering advice to deter crime this holiday season. We take a look in This Week in Tweets. LAPD HQ retweeted this flyer publicizing LAPD Olympic Area's Operation Shoes from Santa on Friday, December 12th at 6 p.m. at the Olympic Station on South Vermont Avenue. Those interested are asked to donate a new pair of shoes for underprivileged school-aged children. Kids are also invited to play in real snow, enjoy hot chocolate, and visit with Santa and his elves. Meanwhile, the LEPD Pacific Division posted this warning video reminding you that criminals are on the prowl this holiday season. The video offers simple advice like remembering to always lock your car door and to never leave your valuable possessions in plain view. Tips that could be the difference between a Merry Christmas and one that's stolen by the Grinch. One local business that's become a landmark of sorts celebrates a milestone. Rasha Goel has more on how a local hot dog stand became a must-eat Los Angeles destination. This line isn't just any line. It's the line to get into Pink's Hot Dogs located on the corner of La Brea and Melrose Avenue. The family-owned hot dog stand has been a Hollywood legend since 1939. And 75 years later, people still can't get enough. Pedro Varela and his family are the first in line and have been waiting for three hours to get in as the popular joint celebrates its 75th anniversary. It's worth the three hour wait. Pink's Hot Dogs celebrated their anniversary with a special treat for the community. We're selling chili dogs for charity tonight for 75 cents for 75 minutes for seven days. And we're giving back to the community who we are so happy to have been serving all these 75 years since the day my parents opened Pink's in 1939 with a little push cart. That push cart has since grown and has also become a favorite eatery for celebrities whose pictures are highlighted on a wall. They've been the greatest hot dog stand, not just in Los Angeles, not in Hollywood, not just in California, not just in the United States, Whoa. but the world. Back when I was new to Los Angeles and new to Hollywood, uh, Pink's was kind of a, a home away from home, and I could afford a hot dog back then, and, and it was great. Who would have thought hot dogs would have helped in creating a legacy? I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Pink's Hot Dogs donated 100% of the gross proceeds to a different charity on each of the seven nights. Students interested in a career in music got a chance to learn the craft at one of the most recognized places that celebrates music, the Grammy Museum. Rasha Goel tells us about a unique program taking students behind the scenes. For today, these students are the celebrities in this room. But who's to say, among them might be the next shining star of the music industry. Thanks to a music education program offered by the Grammy Museum and Council District 1, these students got a hands-on experience in making music. After six weeks, we have about uh, 25 to 30 uh, young, uh, young men and women who, for the first time, are learning how you put together uh, a CD, uh, an album, uh, music. Isabel Espino is among the students showcasing her final performance. She says it's like a graduation and has been a valuable experience. It was worth it because not only did I learn more about myself and my music, but I met a bunch of new people. Students also perform a song they wrote that tells their story. It's just a lie. I can't deny that the fact that every time you tell me that, I want to cry. I get a little nervous with the kids, but, you know, it's more excitement and anticipation and just seeing uh, everything come together. After spending six Saturday mornings together, they are ready to rock and roll with the knowledge and training they have received. It might be a final performance for today, but for some, it's just the beginning of a musical dream. <laughs> I'm Rasha Goel for L.A. This Week.
Holiday on Ice returns downtown. Residents prepare their properties for the rainy season and a new farmer's market along the San Pedro Harbor. These stories in City Beat. Pershing Square is once again the place to be this holiday season as it celebrates the 17th season of its downtown on ice holiday rink. The outdoor rink surrounded by downtown skyscrapers opened mid-November and will stay open through January 19th. Pershing Square is located at 532 South Olive Street. Admission is $9, skates are $3 to rent. In addition to public skating, there are also designated special events like Single in the City and Family Fun Day. Go to Holiday Ice Rink Downtown LA.com for further details and hours. The Los Angeles area is periodically subject to floods that result in property damage. So prior to the recent rainstorm in the first week of the month, the Los Angeles Fire Department made sand available at several fire stations in convenient community locations. Residents, especially those in Foothill and low-lying communities, were encouraged to prepare their properties in advance of rainstorms by securing the perimeter of their property with sandbags to prevent flooding, as well as removing debris to prevent it from entering the storm drain system. Starting November, the San Pedro Harbor became home to a new certified farmer's market from Enriched Farms that opens shop every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The market on 6th and Harbor Boulevard carries all organic produce. Councilmember Joe Buscaino even stopped by during the market's opening day to lend his support for Harbor area businesses. While you're here visiting us, enjoy the LA waterfront, visit our shops and restaurants in our historic downtown San Pedro area. I think it's nice, it's small, and I think it's gonna be something that grows. It's nice having something on the weekend for people to go to and buy fresh produce. The market is just one more piece of the puzzle in making the San Pedro Harbor a destination for tourists and locals alike. It's a $56 million project that was 10 years in the making. Now completed, the new Discovery Cube at Hanson Dam will open up a new future and new scientific vistas for many kids in the valley and beyond. Here's Anna Marcos. Pumps of all kinds, pumped by kids themselves, help set off the fireworks and the confetti. That got the gears rolling for the grand opening of the biggest science center in the nation, the Discovery Cube at Hanson Dam. We know the mission that we want to accomplish with our youth to stimulate their ability to want to come and learn about science, technology, engineering, mathematics. That is something that we've got to do to be competitive. Carl Sagan said, every child starts out a natural born scientist and only a few trickle through with their wonder and enthusiasm of science intact. But now, Discovery Cube fans want to keep that childlike enthusiasm and wonder for science alive. Inside, about a dozen state-of-the-art, kid-friendly exhibits to help kids rediscover their passion for science, conservation, and more. For all of us, the real reward is the smiling faces of the children we have seen go through the cube and to know that they are learning and having fun at the same time. There's a kaleidoscope of exhibits. Behind me, children can take helicopter tours following the 300-mile journey of our LA aqueduct. And this colorful thing over here is the aquavator. You can actually get submerged down into LA's aquifer, our underground water source. The formation of tornadoes, the workings of pulleys, wheels, and turbines, the excavating for long-lost dinosaurs, everything, even the rock-climbing wall, provided a lesson of some sort. It teaches me that um, if you can do it, just keep on trying until you can. As for the zero waste exhibit, where kids learn to recycle trash, let's see what lesson was learned. Well, taking out the trash is a bit of responsibility. All in all, a multifaceted learning experience for tomorrow's budding scientists and engineers. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. For more information on the museum, visit discoverycube.org. In this week's list of things to do, it's all about the holidays, a holiday outdoor movie screening, a holiday concert at UCLA, and Los Angeles Ballet's The Nutcracker. 
the month of December, the Port of Los Angeles is hosting Holidays by the Sea, a series of free and festive weekend holiday events on the LA waterfront. The downtown harbor is located at 6th Street and Harbor Boulevard in San Pedro. Visitors are invited to witness the holiday sale spectacular and light show in the evenings, which turns the public town square outside the Los Angeles Maritime Museum into an outdoor theater venue with holiday movies projected right on Bush ship sale. The holiday film showing from Friday, December 12th through Sunday, December 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. will be Jack Frost. Event dates are subject to cancellation due to inclement weather. For more information, visit lawaterfront.org. And it seems everyone is getting into the spirit of the holidays. UCLA is presenting the UCLA Choral Holiday Concert on Saturday, December 13th at 8 p.m. at Schoenberg Hall, 240 Charles E. Young Drive North on the Northeast Campus right off of Hillgard Avenue. The concert will feature a holiday repertoire sung by UCLA chorale and chamber singers with instrumentalists with conductor Leslie Layton. More details can be found at arts.ucla.edu slash calendar. And a classic holiday event is the Los Angeles Ballet's performance of The Nutcracker. This essential holiday tradition is one for the whole family. Join Clara and her beloved Nutcracker as she travels to the land of snow and to the Palace of the Dolls where all of her favorite doll companions come to life. You can catch a matinee showing at 1 p.m. or a 5 p.m. showing on both Saturday and Sunday, December 13th and 14th at the Dolby Theater at 6801 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood. Go to losangelesballet.org. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. From homemaker to career woman, a new exhibit showcases the evolving careers women had after World War II. Rasha Goel has more. I darn near fainted. I came in here and I always look at the exhibits first. And I saw her with her hand in that position. I said, I know this person. Who is it? Who is it? I looked at the name. It was my eighth grade English teacher. Eileen Seaver, a librarian at the Los Angeles Central Library, is referring to an exhibit that is currently on display in the History and Genealogy Department on Lower Level 4. These are images of women who represent their unique identities. The librarian who handles photo collections tells me how the exhibit titled Defining Their Identity, The Changing Roles of Women in the Post-War is more than just a compilation of photographs on a wall. These women were true groundbreakers. They were brave, they were um, inspired, and they were strong, and they were an inspiration to women all over the country and all over the world. 31 women are featured in this exhibit, and these photos relay their stories. There were pioneers of the post-war era at a time when women were expected to be homemakers or pursue traditional careers. But these women were the stars of the San Fernando Valley. Valley women were architects. They were surgeons, stockbrokers. There was even a woman who was a spy for the FBI. These photographs are from the archives of the Valley Times newspaper, which was published out of North Hollywood from 1946 to 1970. The Valley Times documented the entire San Fernando Valley, a region that had come to exemplify the post-war suburban growth that took place throughout the country. The San Fernando Valley was, in a way, kind of a prototype of suburbia for the nation. The women featured in this exhibit may not have been world-renowned, but for the City of Angels, they were role models who have left their legacy and continue to inspire. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe someday my picture will be up on the wall here. In Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. The exhibit will be on display at the LA Central Library until January. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you could catch us online at lacityview.org. Our Twitter handle is at LATW35. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
physical encounter occurs between man and machine, the machine always wins. Please, don't lose. Obey all the rules of the road. Don't let me make the same mistake again. Hi, I'm Kevin from Chatsworth, offering you a taste of New Orleans since 1986. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel.
Good morning. Today is Friday, de December 12th. <clears throat> Welcome to your Los Angeles City Council meeting. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., and the public is welcome. Madam Clerk, we do have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bonnet, Buscano, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Cresc, Recorning, Labange, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, West, and 10 members present. A quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Wizard moves. Fuentes seconds. Next. Committed to resolutions for approval. Mr. Bloomingfield moves. Cedillo seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, there's a request to continue items 2 and 11 to December 16th. Without objection, that'll be the order. Item 1 is an item notice for public hearing. The Department of Building and Safety reports that items 1, G, L, and M may be received and filed as much as the lien invoice has been rescinded for item 1, G, and the liens have been paid for items 1, L, and M. Okay. Um, do we have cards? Yes, there's cards. Items 3 through 5 are items for which public hearings have been held. Okay, members specials, I do not see any. Why don't we uh, prepare to uh, vote on these items? Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Okay, that brings us where? Items 6 through 12 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do we have cards? Cards on items 6, 9, and 10. Let's hold those items and prepare to vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. Let's move on. Mr. President, that brings counsel to items called special or presentations. I guess we did. Okay, what we're going to do, uh, Mr. LeBonge, is, in fact, no, you know what we're going to do, Mr. LeBonge, we will go directly to your presentation. Mr. President, thank you. I just wanted to be like in the blocks and the track, get off first. Thank you so much. This is the 30th anniversary of a very special place called Paquito Moss, over 11 shops throughout Los Angeles. Give them a big hand. With me this morning is Kevin McCarty and Nina McCarty, who have a great story. He was a uh, doorman at the Chinese Theater. She sold candy. That's where they met. He went to Daniel Murphy High, which is old St. John Vianney, and she went to Hollywood High in a love affair that's lasted all these years because of how their heart is and their minds and the way they treat each other and their family and their employees and friends. Paquito Moss, in this very special day, in their 30th uh, anniversary and began serving fresh Mexican cuisine, Baja California style, in 1984 in a healthy and hot right off the grill. And they're celebrating this anniversary. Paquito Moss means a little more, and they always give you a little more than anyone else. Mr. Fuentes will tell you that as well, because he knows. Kevin McCarty is the founder of Paquito Moss, and he began working in the hospitality industry, as I said, when he was 17 years old. Through this time, though, he created this great managerial team that has independent and chain restaurant operations. And at this time, he is really feeling good because 30 years is a long time for anybody to be in business in this climate that we're in. The first one opened there in 1984, as I mentioned to you. And since then, there's 10 additional restaurants that have been added. Uh, and I am just pleased as a representative to salute a great business and a great family, and a great team of employees. But before I make the real proclamation presentation, I'd like to ask Kevin McCarty to say a few words and welcome him to the microphone, please. Kevin. Thank you very much. Um, as with any uh, business that's successful, it is not that really just one person that is uh, responsible, but the people around them. Uh, 
Uh, my wife, Nina, of 25 years, uh, obviously responsible for letting me get away with and going to work all the time uh, and, and, and just being a tremendous support. Uh, Juan Piche, if right here, has been with me for over 20 years. Um, Siobhan uh, uh, from our office. Uh, Patty Ravellis, uh, she's my right and left arm from, with me for uh, 22 plus years. And then Edgar Escalante and his wife, Jackie. Edgar worked for me from the first year and uh, after 20 years, we helped him open up his own Pukki Tomas, and now he has three Pukki Tomases. And uh, he and Jackie, I'd like to introduce, uh, Edgar, you want to come up and say something? Well, uh, all I can say is uh, I'm very blessed to be in, in, first of all, in America, and second of all, uh, to have a be part of this great uh, community and, and business, which is Paquito Mas, you know, I, I, the original dishwasher, and, and I'm proud of uh, have achieved, you know, the American dream with Kevin and, and the whole family. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nina and Kevin, on behalf of uh, Mayor Garcetti and on behalf of every member of the city council, we present this commendation, salute you for your 30th anniversary. Congratulations. Boom, boom, boom. And then we'll go in the back. Boom, boom, Betsy. And then follow Alice right okay. there. Good job. And Mr. President. Thank you. As I still have 218 minutes left, I got to take time because this man represents the fourth largest country in the world. He's the new Council General for Indonesia. And I please welcome our Council General, Yaron Hadi. Give him a big hand. Thank you. And today, last one, 157, who says that? Jeff Carr, the number one man in the number two position, Special Olympics 2015. We're going to have a lot of good information, team. Each council office is asked to identify a person to work on many of the projects. Good to see you, Jeff. Good to thank see you. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, members. Thank you, Mr. Labaj. Let us quickly go to our, uh, I guess what we want to do is recess this meeting, go to our special meeting, call the roll. Blumenfeld, Bonnet, Buscano, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Caress, Recoyne, Labange, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, West, and 11 members present, a quorum, Mr. President. Item 13 Thank is you. an item notice for public hearing, and there are cards on that item. 13, uh, Robert were uh, Becky, maybe? And I'll have you come up and correct it, sir. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. President, honorable members of the Los Angeles uh, City Council and uh, my fellow citizens. Uh, my name's Robert Warwicki. I represent uh, a small land-owning partnership called 105th Street West Partners. Uh, we got involved with the Los Angeles DWP because we're involved in the Barren, Barren Ridge Transmission Line project. It happens to be a project that seeks to acquire a part of our land. Uh, thus far, the process has been very awkward for us as a landowner. We received an offer from LA D DWP for a, uh, what we consider a fraction of what we paid for our property per acre. And then we have countered your offer and uh, our arguments have essentially uh, been put on hold. Uh, so at this point, we've been referred back uh, by your real estate representatives to seek another appraisal, which we have uh, set out to do. And uh, please understand that this process uh, takes a, a fair amount of time to find a qualified appraiser, which we have done. And of course, the appraiser uh, has to uh, be paid according to your uh, proposal by the LA DWP. So from the standpoint of a small landowner such as ourselves, uh, we believe that the prospect of getting sued over such a small issue is not effective or efficient. And furthermore, when I looked at uh, Mr. Galperin's webpage in Los Angeles, he mentions that cutting waste is important and that budgets are important. Uh, for the small amount relative to a large lawsuit involved here, we seek to not have a lawsuit. We are trying to work with the LADWP to make this acquisition smooth. But of course, we also represent our own interests, and you know we don't want to essentially lose a lot of money on this. Uh, however, we just 
uh, represent that we would not like to be sued. We'd like to work with you. Thank you. Great. No, thank you very much. I have no other cards on this item. No speakers in the queue. So we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That passes. Thank you very much. And Next Mr. President, that ordinance will be held over to December 16th for a second reading. For a second reading. Great. Or okay. This, or less. Excuse me, January yes. 7th for a okay. second reading. Okay. All right. Uh, next item, I believe we have uh, Madam Clerk, item 17, is that correct? Um, actually, um, items 14 through, through 16 are items for which public hearings have been held. Oh, okay. So we'll go ahead and take those items then before us. And for item 14, Mr. President, um, there's an, a technical amendment um, for Mr. Koretz. Um, his amendment is uh, to amend recommendation number, for item 14, to amend recommendation number two to change account 003040 contractual services to account 001010 salaries general and amend attachment 5A to the Los Angeles Fire Department positions to change the position from programmer analyst four to a senior systems analyst one. Okay, very well. So that will, item will be for us with the technical correction. Colleagues, do we have any specials on those particular items? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Great, thank you so much. And that's item 14 adopted as amended. Yes, thank you. Item 17 is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes require for consideration. Okay, those are considered without objection. That'll be the order. We'll go ahead and take 17 now for cards. We've got two cards. Mr. John Walsh, please come on up. Followed by, uh, I'm not sure if it's Carlos. I can't read the writing. Whoever else. So I can't read the writing on this. And uh, uh, Mr. Herman, this was not your name submitted. So this is somebody else. So... This is somebody else, Carlos. And if Carlos is not here, we'll go ahead and submit the card for the record. So, John Mr. Walsh. Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or Jay Walsh Confidential tweeting at Hollywood Dems. You understand what they're doing here? They're calling it the big switcheroo. We have special day on the odd years. We have a primary for local elections and we have a runoff for local elections in June. They want to take this and change it to the even years where all of, you'll vote for mayor, first for president, then for senator, then for assembly, then for senate, then for uh, uh, sheriff, then for supervisors, and at the bottom of the ballot, and we're not going to have flip pages on the ballot anymore, we're going to have a computer, they'll be buried below there, the, the uh, a mayoral election and school board. They're, discouraging you from voting. The only people who will vote are the ones who are paid to vote. They'll, they, the people who are, of course, all Democrats and all on the side of these people up here. The, this is the, and now what are they saying? This is going to increase participation. The t participation in the state election was 24%. The this recently, the participation, those who voted in, this, in uh, the mayor's election was 1 or 2 percent below that. I'm telling you, they are doing everything they can to discourage you from voting for anybody who doesn't have a million dollars to buy places on the, uh, the ballot mailers, that are the mailers that are sent out. This is going to be a slap in your face because Democrats and Republicans, we want our mayoral election day. We've had it in this state and this city for a hundred years and Herb Wesson and these assholes are not taking away our election day. HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you for maintaining decorum. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you a shot, Herman, if this is your card. Are you Carlos today, Herman? Is that who you are today? No, I know. Your name changes every day, so I just need to know. That's you. So if you want to come on up and speak under Carlos. Okay. ATF is name, sir. Mr. Thank Carlos, you. right? But I'm, I'm just here to remind all you who Speak vote, to this chamber and stay on the subject. All of us who vote, that it's very obvious that the decision-making of our voting opinion is no longer in our hands. I can't reiterate what HollywoodHighland.org John Wall said, but he's 190% correct. 
consideration for the most simplest ballot simplification committee, and then again to adjust and align the terms with the election dates under Los Angeles Election Code 405, I find that offensive to the public because you as voters have to make decisions that will make changes in your everyday life the same way I put on a raincoat when it rains and a rain cap to keep the rain off my eyes. But the new election dates and schedules for the Los Angeles Unified School District, LAUSD, has no purpose with this council. It's a conflict of interest. Let the voters make those decisions, not based on bribes, pay to play, or special interest. Because again, the violation of the statute of the California law prohibits pay to play, pay to vote. So to approve or disapprove, it's very obvious I disapprove. And many of you will probably agree with that because in conclusion, turn to hollywoodhighland.org for confirmation on the elections of LA. Okay, and uh, seeing no other cards, Mr. Wesson, you have a motion for us? President, uh, I uh, request that we approve this, and it's my understanding I have a second from Mr. Koretz. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and open the roll on that. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Great, that'll be the order. Thank you very much. And with that also, I've but got a, yes? Mr. President, there's a request to send item 15 forthwith. With that, I was just, uh, before I was interrupted, said I had a request on item 15 to send it forthwith, Madam Clerk. And um, I also have a request uh, from Harry on item three forthwith. So that'll be the order without objection. Our 16th council member over there, Harry, thank you. Okay, so um, Madam Clerk, I believe we do have a presentation. If we uh, can all draw our attention. Susie, Ms. Mr. Oh. President, first, would you like to adjourn the special and return to oh, the Oh, I'm meeting? sorry. Yes, we're still in the, yes, we'll go ahead and adjourn and go back into the regular. Now, if we can draw our attention to the podium for a special presentation, the floor is yours, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. There we are. Now we're on. I'm not worried about my face being seen on television, but I'd like to make sure everybody meets Christmas. Okay. Uh, her nickname is Chrissy, but uh, her name is Christmas. She's approximately four years old. She is a Chihuahua and Pomeran Pomeran Pomeranian mix. Uh, she's very excited to be with us today. As you can see, she has a little rain jacket on and she's here ready to go. She has her shots mm -hmm. and she's looking for a home. So Christmas is looking to become someone's holiday gift. So if you ever wanted to give uh, unconditional love or receive unconditional love, I've got a feeling that in this little package that I'm carrying that there's a lot of unconditional love. So if you have an interest uh, in, in Chrissy or Christmas, call 888-452-7381. Again, remember, at the City of Los Angeles, we have a 100% adoption rate. We want to keep that uh, alive. Arlene, one of our great uh, folk from Animal Services, is here with us today. She's going to have Chrissy in the back. So let's look at her face. <laughs> if you want her, you better call in. Call in now. I do not believe she's going to last last long. Let's keep our 100% adoption rate alive. Is there, are there any tidbits, Arlene, that you'd like to share with the public about her? Or? She loves laps. No. She loves laps. She loves to sit on your laps. She loves treats. She's very gentle, and she just likes to snuggle, so she'd be good for Christmas. So, somebody please, let's uh, 
this will be the, the last companion animal that we want to get adopted in 2014. So please, someone from television or in the audience, take Chrissy home. She's ready to go. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Oh, thank you very much. Let's give them another round of applause for leading the effort to save animals here in the, in the city of Los Angeles and provide phenomenal homes. So thank you, Herb Wesson. Okay, so with that, I believe Mitchell Farrell's got a presentation, if you're ready. Otherwise known as the good Mitch on the city council, yes. Well, there's the good and the great, so I just, okay, yes. Hey, come on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'll take either one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, uh, today we have a very, very special introduction. Uh, lamentablemente, Senor Price, hoy está enfermo y no puede unirse a nosotros hoy. Um, me siento honrado de dar la bienvenida a María Mercedes López Peña, nuestra nueva consulado general de El Salvador en Los Ángeles, a el pueblo de Nuestra Señora de la Reina de Los Ángeles. Espero con interés trabajar juntos en diversos temas para fortalecer las relaciones entre la República de El Salvador y la ciudad de Los Ángeles para que podamos ofrecer la mejor calidad de vida a nuestros hermanas, hermanos rather, uh, salvadoreños. I am honored to stand here today to extend warmest welcome to Maria Mercedes Lopez Peña, our new Consulate General of El Salvador in Los Angeles. Please give her a warm round of applause. Consul General Peña is the first woman to be appointed as Consulate General of El Salvador in Los Angeles in the past 25 years. As you are aware, colleagues, the city of Los Angeles has the largest concentration of Salvadorans outside of the Republic of El Salvador. A big percentage of that residing in the 13th Council District, which I am honored and privileged to represent. In January of 2005, the city of Los Angeles became a sister city to San Salvador. Establishing our sister city's relationship with San Salvador presented a great opportunity not only for our two cities, but for our country to continue strengthening our friendship and our cultural and economic ties. Here in Los Angeles, we're fortunate to have supporting community leaders and organizations that provide support and services to Angelinos. Community leaders like our great Salvadoran friend and brother, Carlos Vaccarano. Carlos. Thank you. Carlos has served with Caracen, or Central American Refugee Center, and CELEF, Salvadoran American Leadership and Education Fund, to better the lives of Salvadorans in Los Angeles. Consul General Lopez Pena's career in public service expands uh, or has uh, existed for nearly two decades, which started in 1995 when she served as Executive Director for the Center of Exchange and Solidarity, El Salvador. She then served as Program Manager for Caracen, El Salvador, followed by Executive Director, Immigration Forum of El Salvador. General Manager, City of Cantepec, uh, or the City of Mists, from 2003 to 2006, then Manager of Citizen Participation and General Manager, City of Santa Tecla until 2009, Deputy Director General, Directorate General of Immigration and Nationality until 2012, and then finally, Director of Consular Affairs and Deputy Director General of Foreign Service, Ministry of Foreign Affairs until her recent appointment as our Consul General. Uh, as you can hear from her resume, colleagues, Consul General Pena brings a lot to the table and is knowledgeable of various levels of government. I think I can say that we all look forward to working with her um, on various topics to strengthen the relationship between the Republic of El Salvador and the City of Los Angeles so we can provide the best 
quality of life our Salvadorian brothers and sisters deserve. Uh, and then lastly, before I introduce the Consul General, uh, Curran Price, who fell ill today, otherwise he was going to join me up here, so we wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, so at this point, I would love uh, Consul General uh, Pena to say a few words. Thank you. Muy buenos días a todas y a todos los concejales. Good morning. Good morning to all. Y tan importante ciudad. Good morning to all council. Good morning to all councilmen. En mi resume, members, un momento por favor. Members of this city of the city council of this very important city. En mi resume no incluí los años que en parte de mi adolescencia y juventud viví en esta ciudad. In my resume, I did not include the number of years that as a teenager and in my youth I lived and spent here in this city. Y puedo dar fe y testimonio de lo importante que siempre ha sido esta ciudad de Los Ángeles para la comunidad salvadoreña residente no solamente en esta ciudad. And I can attest how important this city has been to the Salvadorian community sino también por el ejemplo que se ha dado a otras ciudades importantes de grandes concentraciones de salvadoreños y salvadoreñas. And I can, also, I can also say that it's been a great, um, of great importance this city to not only the Salvadoran country and, and countrymen and community, but to other nationalities as well. Es por ello que a partir del primero de diciembre que el gobierno del Salvador me nombra nueva cónsul general en esta ciudad. That's the reason that as of December 1st, the government of Salvador is naming me the new cónsul general lo of this city. Lo acepto con mucho honor, and con I mucha honra I accept, y con mucho orgullo. I accept it with a lot of honor and it's a great pride for me to receive this honor. Por, por tratarse de la segunda ciudad Después de nuestro país, since it's the second largest city after our own country, donde nos encontramos más de millón y medio de salvadoreños, hombres y mujeres. Where over one and a half million Salvadorians call home, ladies and gentlemen from El Salvador. En realidad, Los Ángeles siempre ha sido una ciudad, una ciudad líder en la protección de las necesidades de los intereses y de los derechos de la comunidad salvadoreña. In reality, Los Angeles has always been a free city to protect the interests, the freedom, and the needs of the Salvadoran community. Es por ello que este día agradezco muy humildemente. That's the reason why today I'm very humble and very grateful. Y con mucho honor este espacio frente a ustedes y a la comunidad de Los Ángeles. And I'm very honored to accept this space in the community here in the city of Los Angeles. Y finalmente quiero agradecer especialmente a este consejo finally, y a su alcalde Eric Garcetti. And finally I am very grateful and I want to thank this honorable council and also to Mayor Eric Garcetti por haber brindado un especial lugar a un líder del pueblo salvadoreño for, provide, como, for providing a very special place to a Salvadoran leader como es nuestro mártir Monseñor Oscar Arnulfo Romero and our own martyr and hero Monseñor Oscar Arnulfo Romero que se encuentra en un lugar tan simbólico para la comunidad salvadoreña como es el MacArthur Park who can be found in a very symbolic area for our community of El Salvador which is located in MacArthur Park agradezco de manera especial a todos los concejales que están en los distritos de mayor concentración de nuestra comunidad. And I'm, es, I'm especially grateful to all the council members in which the highest concentration of Salvadorians live. Por lo tanto, de todo corazón, les agradezco esta oportunidad. And therefore, with all my heart, I am truly appreciative of this opportunity. Thank you. Wonderful. Well done. <laughs> Consul General Pe Peña, Muy espero poder trabajar, tra trabajar con usted. Uh, felicidades y bienvenido a Los Ángeles. Muchísimas gracias, Constantin. Got it. Uh, yeah.
So now we continue back. Just follow William. Okay. Thank you, colleagues. Oh, thank you very much. Let's give uh, let's give them all another round of applause. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We'll turn it over to our distinguished member from the third district for a presentation. If I can get the uh, ITA folks, Ron and everybody involved in our, our digital world up here, people from the virtual world coming into the physical world. We've got a, we've got a big group here. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is a, a pleasure to stand here to honor the Information Technology Agency here in Council. You know, we have, we have a great uh, technology city department and focus and innovation focus and it's not a surprise that occasionally we win an award and this is a turnaround last last year and a half this the digitally and um, technology wise we have been just soaring forward so I wish it would just you know if it was just one award maybe we wouldn't do a presentation but the last couple of months they have racked up three major awards and it warrants coming forward and talking about it a little bit and honoring them ITA has been hard at work keeping the city of Los Angeles up to date with a variety of programs and services, uh, providing Los Angelinos real-time access to their local government. In September of this year, the city of Los Angeles official website, lacity.org, earned second place nationally in the Center for Digital Government's 2014 Best of the Web Award. I got a nice certificate for that. We're not going to, but, but there's more. Uh, but, but that competition, the nationwide competition, evaluated over 300 applications from state and local governments. They were graded on innovation, <coughs> functionality, productivity, and performance. LACity.org is a great representation of all city departments and services, uh, and it was great for that recognition. But then in October 2014, the city's MyLA311 mobile app was showcased at the 2014 Mobile Government Contest in Sacramento. Showcased. Participating board members and peer organizations, they named My LA 311 the most valuable program. And it was most valuable for linking Angelinos to the services and information that they need to enjoy their city, beautify their neighborhood, and stay connected with local government. Stay connected and engaged, which is what this is about. And now, most recently, and the impetus for moving forward with, these, with this recognition, the reason we're here, ITA finished first place in the highly acclaimed nationwide digital cities competition, large cities category. This is a major achievement, folks, to be able to get to take first place. Let's give them a hand for that. <laughs> what digital cities does, they evaluate achievements in delivering digital services to constituent to constituents, they look at return on technology investment, they look at the city's ability to innovate and leverage creative practices. And from applications such as the city's website, lacity.org, the My311 mobile app, LAX real-time flight status, Data LA open data portal, and the performance dashboards, ITA has been expanding government and engaging the public in numerous and important ways. One of the city's newest and innovative, most innovative applications uh, is the My Control Panel LA. It's a great resource that provides Angelinos transparency into city's finances and makes the city more accountable, more accessible, efficient, and transparent. It's a pleasure we, we have with us here today our controllers, uh, the Honorable Ron Galperin, who's been a driving force for this. Uh, he's here to honor with his team for partnering with ITA to create Control Panel LA. It takes, it takes a village. We got a village behind me here. Uh, and I want to note and approve, note that moving forward with this kind of open data in Control Panel LA and some of the things that we're doing is not, it's not a no-brainer. It's not easy. It, it means taking yourselves, putting yourself out on the line, warts and all, and being willing to take, uh, to put that out there for the world to see for better and for worse, but knowing that in the end, we're going to have a better outcome if we're transparent and we're able to move forward. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's been difficult in some ways, but it's been very worthwhile, and it's, it's part and parcel of the way we're going to move the city forward. So we've got bold visions that have been paying off in dividends with these great awards. 
Control Panel LA, all of the city websites and applications are making the city more transparent and user friendly. And so on behalf of the city, I want to join in, you know, we've, all these external awards have been happening and we're going to have someone uh, from uh, eRepublic come and talk about those awards, but I want to make sure that, that we as a city family also recognize the great work that's being done here. So I have uh, a number of certificates and then I'm going to have a number of folks speak. And, uh, first of all, I'm going to... I guess we'll get so many, you're going to just hand it back to Steve, this is a different group, and we have the information. We do, we do have one member on the board, so while you're handing out the certificates. Okay, uh, and, then, and then we have a couple of speakers here as yes, well. Yes, of course, absolutely. Okay. Mr. LaBanche. You never speak when they're handing out certificates for you new members. You wait. Get the attendance. Mr. Bloomingfield, thank you for taking this ball and throwing it deep. When you reflect it there, I thought about my early days and how we communicated here by radio. We communicated by radio. And then I see the smiling face of our city controller. And I said, if we probably wanted to save a lot of money in cell phone costs, we go back to the radio because the radio is free in the sense of from car to car. But that's another story, another discussion. I just wanted to give a shout out to all of ITA because it is transforming it. I will be asking in the mayor's office because he's Mr. ITA and Mr. Cole, I'll tell you, you're, uh, you have a relationship with the mayor and the uh, MTA, correct? And I, every day on our city streets, a supervisor from the MTA goes down the city streets on checking the lines. And when there's a problem in the street, boom, you take a click, you get it right to Public Works. There's a big pothole at 9th and, uh, 9th and Vermont right there. And I'm thinking that's the old bus coming down Vermont, I don't want everybody to think of the city when they hit that pothole. Things like that seem small, but they're very big to people. They're very big to people. And I also wanted to just give a shout out to the call center, the 311 call center, which is your basic contact for the citizens. And I uh, ask you all to give a big hand for ITA and the 311 call center, all the operators who do that. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. So we have the certificates for the three different awards, as I said, the last, last few months racking up these awards. And I also wanted to give a, a certificate to our next speaker who's coming up, who's been a driving force on the control panel LA and uh, just is doing a fantastic job. So Ron Galperin, if you come to the mic, and I'll start by giving you a certificate. I know it's a, oh, wow. you give these out yourself, but. <laughs> <laughs> but these are even nicer than the ones that we have in our office. These are great. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> You get a certificate and you get the microphone. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for having us this morning. And what a proud day it is for LA, uh, for this council, and for all of us to uh, see LA named as number one digital city by eRepublic Center for Digital Government. And you'll be hearing from them in just a second. And I'm really proud of the role that the uh, controller's office has been able to play. In fact, the judges of uh, Digital Cities uh, specifically cited our financial transparency portal uh, in, in giving this uh, wonderful award. What I really think it is, though, is I think a testament to consensus and collaboration across the city between ITA, between my office, the council, the mayor, uh, Socrata, which was our private partner in the uh, control panel. And it's the approach that I think is going to really help us solve our biggest challenges in the city. And I'm personally grateful and excited to be in the city at this time when I think there's more collaboration happening than perhaps in decades before us when you see the work that's being done between various offices in this city. Now, when we started this effort and when we wanted to launch Control Panel, we were told that this was going to take years to accomplish, uh, that it was going to take millions of dollars. In fact, New York did this. It cost them $3 million and it took them three years. Uh, we did it for about $85,000, and it took us eight weeks, which was unprecedented, I think. And now, of course, so much of this information about the finances of the city is available 24 hours a day. And it's proactive transparency that I think is also going to make a difference in our functions in the city, helping us to operate more efficiently, and also building public trust. Now, None of this happens without resources. And so I'm, I'm here to make actually, among other things, a little bit of a pitch for ITA, even though they didn't even know it. They've got 440 employees right now. Do you know that about one half of them are eligible to retire by 2017? One half. And reportedly, according to the numbers, and we have this in our payroll system, 
Out of those 440 people, there are only three under the age of 30. Now, you can be in your 80s and be very tech savvy. In fact, my mother who just turned 87 is on Facebook and on her email every day. But having said that, we need to be bringing in a new energy into the city and that's gonna be absolutely essential to I think continuing the work that ITA has now started on. Uh, I wanted to very much thank the Information and Tech and General Services uh, Committee, uh, notably its chair, Bob Blumenfield. Mike Bonin, Mitch O'Farrell. Uh, the mayor's office, including Rick um, Hull. Um, Miguel Sangalang, Peter Marks, most recently yeah. Abhi Nimani for their leadership on this issue. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some members of my own staff, uh, including notably Todd Bowie, uh, Rashad Mfui, Edwin Evanesian, Lin Vo, Riyad Hook, Nam Win, Susie Jack, who now has gone across the street, uh, Daniel Tarika, Juan Lopez, and Kyle Hall, who really were absolutely essential in making these things happen, and there is still much more to come. And last but not least, I really want to thank ITA. I've so enjoyed uh, the partnership and working with them under the leadership of Steve Reniker, Ted Ross, Joyce Edson. You've been doing really some vital, vital work to bring us into the 21st century, and thank you so much, and looking forward to our next collaborations. Okay, we're talking about the awards. We're going to have some other folks speak, and I, I want to just say something. One of the reasons why this, why this city is moving forward is because we're really all rowing in the same direction in many ways, and it's, it's the controller's office, it's the mayor's office, uh, we have Rick Cole here, we have Peter Marks here, uh, it's ITA, it is a team. It is Team Los Angeles, uh, and that's the only way to take on big and ambitious tasks like we have uh, here today. Now, the next person who's, who I want to speak is, is, comes from eRepublic. They, they put together the digital competition, uh, and so she's, she's the, the objective source out here. So you, yeah, you hear it from me and from, from folks in the city, but let's, ha let's have Kathlia Robinett come speak and, and tell us from your perspective. Great. Good morning, everyone. How are you? It's a good day of celebration today. Not only do we have rain in California as a native Californian, and we're very excited about that, but I am here to present the number one Digital Cities Award for Los Angeles. So, this is a very big deal. That means that Boston, Chicago, New York, Seattle did not get this award. This means you are number one, which is a huge accomplishment. The first time I visited the city, I think was in 1996 regarding technology, and to see the difference. What I've seen here in the last two years specifically the leadership, the drive, that determination to be number one, the new innovative technologies that you've done, your website that also got number two in our best of the web competition this year. I'm predicting that it's gonna be number one next year because I think it's fantastic. I look at hundreds of websites every year. You can see what an exciting life that I lead. <laughs> and I will tell you that I love your city's website, and you're going to continue to do all of the great things. What you've done with open data, what you've done with transparency, what you've done for digital inclusion is what most cities in this nation are not doing, and you are doing that today. I visit a lot of cities around the nation. I can tell that that is a leadership issue here. That means the council, the mayor, the team, and the technology professionals here are heads above other places in this country. So I just am here to celebrate that and let you know that this is a very important day for all of you, not only you here, but the citizens of Los Angeles, because technology is where it's at and with everything that you all are doing and everything that you plan on doing, I am very, very excited for everybody here. So I would love actually to present the number one Digital Cities Award 
to the folks and the great, amazing team here that have made this possible. So number one digital cities to this fabulous team, congratulations. All right, very good. Where's your home office? Where's your home office? Where's your, where's your home office? We are based in Sacramento, California. Very good. And Mr. Cole, the deputy mayor, was down at the League of Cities and got another award from the National League of Cities. So uh, that's a credit to the mayor, uh, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you for this great honor. That's very yes. good. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Speaking of Mr. Cole, he is our next speaker. And as I said, it, it, it takes the team moving forward. And the mayor's office has just... Uh, exerted tremendous leadership, has been focused, uh, has never taken their eye off the ball, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Cole. Uh, members of the council, on behalf of the mayor, I want to thank you for giving some of your precious time to recognize a terrific team of professionals who don't get enough recognition. We're working hard to keep the technical lights on in our city. In the toughest days of World War II, one of the members of the British War Cabinet said, we are out of money. We are going to have to think. <laughs> Los Angeles faces daunting and staggering financial and organizational challenges. If we're going to fix our streets, if we're going to fix our sidewalks, if we're going to restore city services in all of our neighborhoods, if we're going to lift people out of poverty, we are going to have to think because we don't have the money to throw at these issues. There is no leverage more powerful in today's world than technology. But technology has to be wielded by people who are passionate to deploy it, to seek it out, and to find solutions to problems. We have no cause for complacency in winning this award. We can be proud of our efforts, but we have a long way to go in this city. The optimistic part, the hopeful part, the exciting part is we have a public squad of geeks in charge of this city. Mayor Garcetti, Controller Galprin, Chairman Blumenfield, they are committed to deploying technology to solve our toughest problems. And they've got a tremendous team of folks behind them. So we have a lot to do to keep on top. In many ways, this award represents more a most improved than anything we could say that would allow us to rest on our laurels. But we are determined to deploy the best technology that we can find so we can better serve the citizens better, faster, and cheaper. Those are the words that are our bywords, and we are passionate, and we are going to keep doing this until this city is the best run big city in America. Thank you very much. Much. The number one geek, is that correct, Mr. Cole? And now uh, our final speaker for this presentation. We talk about the team leaders, the team that needs to, to move forward. Our team leader at ITA, the general manager, Steve Renneker. Well, this, this award, it, it really is an honor, and it's, it's really a reflection on every department working together. All the general managers working together. We have an IT policy committee with representatives from every department there. And it's their contributions to the changes to the website, to getting the data from all those departments up into our open data or data LA portal that made it happen. So I want to give the thank you really not just to the ITA, all city departments because it was a collective and collaborative effort. Thank you. Very good. Let's hear it for the number one city. Good. First place. All right, we're going to step away from the microphone. We thank everybody, ITA, and that recognition. At this time, I'd like to call on the great councilman of the first district, the pride of Roosevelt High, quarterback Gil Cedillo.
Mr. Sedia. Go Riders. Mr. President, you know the uh, class of 72 was an illustrious class in the city of Los Angeles. Brought you uh, two council members sitting here uh, around the dais. And it also brought us this incredible immigrant story of Mr. Uh, Chok Choi, who, believe it or not, is retiring as the principal of Castellar Elementary School from uh, LAUSD. He'll retire next Friday. He's a uh, class of 72 Belmont. Belmont High School. And uh, I, I want to tell you something about him. He is what we would refer to as the cornerstone of leadership from Chinatown. And he's an extraordinary partner for us. He's what people call an authentic and organic leader. And he's been instrumental with us in a whole series of projects that are transforming uh, Chinatown as it moves forward with other parts of the city, with other parts of the first. Uh, in particular, as you know, the, uh, the library used to be situated at uh, Castellar, and now it's been moved a few years ago, moved uh, over to the corner. Uh, and uh, at Yale and Ord, we have this incredible uh, new library, and we're going to have this incredible park and this passageway for the seniors. And uh, we could not have done any of it without him. Uh, Mr. Choi's been with the district for 37 years. Uh, 32 years at Castellar. Uh, he's um, been an extraordinary leader in the area, insisting, insisting at a time when we've cut uh, funding for the arts, that uh, at his school everyone gets exposed to the arts. And they have a program called Education Through Music LA. And children from K to 2 are made sure that they get the fundamentals of music. And then from uh, grades three to five, they get the training in stringed instruments. And that is something that establishes discipline, uh, responsibility, and collaboration, the essence of good civic participation. Uh, in addition, he's been a leader, uh, making sure that they have a um, very positive bilingual program, a dual program in which they speak Mandarin uh, and English. And he's also been involved in all the other important activities of Chinatown. He's on the bid. Uh, he was on the CRA. Um, he's in the Historical so Society. And he's also uh, created space for us to have our town hall meetings. He is an extraordinary, extraordinary story. Uh, he came from China with his family. Uh, they lived in Hong Kong for some years. And then they migrated to the United States in 1969, as I told you, as part of Belmont's class of uh, 72. Uh, and then he went to the perhaps greatest public school in, uh, in America, UCLA over in Westwood. Uh, you know, as I said, public school. Uh, he's married to his, the love of his life, Jeanette. They have three children, Serena, Leanne, and Caleb. Let me commend Mr. Choi for three decades of service to our community, a stalwart and an icon of Chinatown. Uh, let me bring up uh, a man who deserves his retirement, but a man who will be missed uh, tremendously because of his commitment to the community, uh, the very uh, honorable Mr. Chuck Choi, the principal of Castellar. Big hand. And before you speak, Mr. Chow, Mr. Weezar wants to say a few words, former board member, Great. LA Unified. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sadil, for bringing in this uh, great uh, man and leader and institution in Chinatown. I just want to thank you for the work you've done. You know, when I first got elected to the school board, you invited me to go take a tour of your school. And it was a pleasant uh, a tour, and you uh, reminded me of uh, the high achievement of your students. But then when I was leaving, you reminded me of the work that needed to get done at the school. And at that time, the systems for improving and modernizing our schools really weren't in place. Uh, it needed a lot of work. But your insistency, uh, your looking out for that school, uh, you have made a difference to ensure that your students 
got the best services possible, whether it was the facilities or the academic programming, just given the high achievement the students have made there. I just want to thank you for the work you've done. And it's always great uh, to go back to the neighborhood where you grew up and to give back, and you've done that for many years. And so we in the city really appreciate you. Thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you, Mr. Weezer. Very nice words. Principal Thank you, Mr. President and honorary city council members. It's really been an honor and privilege for me to work in one of the oldest schools in the city of Los Angeles, celebrating 132 years. And I've lived in Chinatown, I've served in Chinatown all 45 years since I've immigrated to the uh, United States. I must say that um, with the support of the city, the district, and also active community members, Castellar has become one of the high achieving schools in the city of Los Angeles, serving predominantly English learners from immigrant families. I'm proud to be able to bring my daughter, some of the, school, uh, the students and staff members here to share in this wonderful moment. Thank you, and definitely thank you, Mr. Weezer, for your support in converting and renovating the Chinatown library space that was vacated when they moved. You should come back and visit and see how beautiful a school library we have now. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Cedillo. So it's with great honor and great privilege that we present you this resolution signed by all members uh, of the council and our president. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, Thank you very much. For a Belmont guy, you did quite well. <laughs> Congratulations. That's Northern League. Northern League all the way. That's a great picture, Life Magazine picture. Congratulations, everybody, Mr. Cedia. Mr. Cedia, thank you for your leadership, Principal Cho. Thank you, Sergeants, we're gonna ask them to go to the press room, and now we'll have the great councilman of the 14th District, the pride of Salesian High, who uh, has got a very special, special recognition for one of the most special institutions in the United States, in the state of California, in Los Angeles. Please welcome Mr. Weezar. Well, thank you, Mr. President. And um, we're here today uh, to welcome to the chambers and to recognize the 50th anniversary of the Music Center here in downtown Los Angeles. And this is an institution that has brought the arts in many forms to the city of Los Angeles and beyond. And during its 50 year history, the Music Center has become one of the most innovative and highly regarded arts institutions in the country. It is the destination to experience a wide range of world-class programs, everything from classical orchestra to emerging contemporary dance, opera, to experimental jazz. The center began as the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, the Amazon Theater, and the Mark Taper Forum. Not long ago, it grew to include the Walt Disney Concert Hall. The center's multiple spaces and performing groups welcome more than two million people each year to enjoy live performances and free arts events at its campus and at Grand Park in downtown Los Angeles. The Music Center is also the home base for four of the world's finest performing arts companies, Center Theater Group, LA Opera, the LA Phil, and the Los Angeles Master Chorale. We are also proud that these creative powerhouses call Los Angeles home. Many of the Music Center's millions of annual visitors never even need to go inside to experience the center's programs. One, among one of its greatest contributions to Los Angeles are the dance and music events that take place outdoors in Grand Park, 
where Angelinos and visitors can enjoy incredible performances with the Music Center's iconic buildings and the downtown skyline as the backdrop. This dedication to creating great works of performing art outside its doors as well as inside its beautiful theaters has made the Music Center truly extraordinary. Personally, I'm excited about the prospect of a second annual New Year's Eve countdown right here in Grand Park which will be made extra special with Music Center performances. I also want to recognize the institution's commitment to arts education, and it continues to be a valuable resource for our schools, our youth, and for students of all ages. Today, we honor the group for Forward Think community members from all over Los Angeles that came together 50 years ago in support of One Vision, the vision of their friend, Dorothy Chandler, to build a performing arts center that would put Los Angeles on the map not just for movies, but for innovation in music and dance. It would become a place of many voices with something for everyone, and it certainly has become that. I also want to recognize the Music Center's president, Steve Rontree, who could not be with us today. Uh, he has provided superb leadership over the past 12 years. I also want to wish him luck as he takes on his new position as managing director of the Center Theater Group, one of the Music Center's finest companies. From the very beginning, the Music Center was envisioned as a cultural focal point, a center of arts and culture for the entire community. With the Music Center, the Los, Los Angeles has indeed become a city of the world. And so for that, on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, we would love to present this resolution signed by all the council members uh, to Renee Williams, who will be accepting on behalf of the center she is the Vice President of Programs, and congratulations on 50 years. May we be here 50 years from now as well. Very special presentation for a very special organization who had their big celebration just Last weekend, I'd like to ask, uh, you going to continue the program right there? Yes, sir. I'm yes, I want to hear from all of them. Oh, sure. I'd like to invite up uh, Bill Amundsen, the president of the Center Theater Group. Yeah, great Amundsen family, one of the great families of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilman. It's indeed an honor to be here representing the Music Center as well as one of the three founding families. There's the Amundsen, the Taper, and the Chandler that are on that Music Center campus, which is terrific to sell celebrate the 50th anniversary, but what really should be celebrated is the buildings as well as what's happening in them today. There's a number of residence companies that are providing outstanding works on the stages, and the importance of those were certainly emphasized by the councilman, who, by the way, his district includes the Arts District, that's also another fascinating feature of the city of Los Angeles. It's something that everybody should go to, and when you've got friends and family that are coming from out of town, the first stop should be downtown Los Angeles and the Music Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you and thank the uh, whole Amundsen family. God thank bless you your dad's memory. Thank you so much, Mr. President. We're also joined today by uh, Terry Knowles, the president of the Master Chorale, and also Christopher Kolch, the president and CEO of LA Opera. And on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, we want to again thank you for the incredible work you've done for 50 years. Uh, downtown LA will certainly would not be where it is today, or is what it is, without your center. Thank you so much for providing us the arts here in Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give the Music Center of Los Angeles County a great big, big, big hand. And I just want to give another shout out to the complex, Bill Amundsen. I love the dancing door. Wherever I'm down and out here in City Hall, I go over to the dancing door and I walk through it ten times, and I'm a new man. Right, that's right. Now, the great councilman of the 7th District, who's here today to recognize people who make a big difference with young boys and girls of the East San Fernando Valley.
Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I am here today to tell you a very short story, and I've got wonderful people that are standing with me today representing uh, the Tahunga Little League and representatives from the artificial grass liquidators. But I've got a very short video first I'd like to show you all to uh, sort of set up the story. Colleagues, what you see there uh, in the video is what should happen in Los Angeles, where we partner together to solve problems. Unfortunately, in November, the Tohungo Little League suffered a devastating loss where criminals came and stole the artificial turf to a Little League field. You gotta be kidding me. I, you know, I can't imagine how anybody, Mr. President, could sleep at night who's responsible for this. What happened as a result is that four through six-year-olds had to play on gravel as a result. And what uh, happened after the theft is that it left the uh, Tahunga Little League with a real loss. The, the cost to replace this was $5,000, which, as many of you know who volunteer with Little Leagues and other organizations, isn't easy to come by. And so the call was placed, and it was heard by the great people at Artificial Grass Liquidators, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them. But word sped, spread really fast about this uh, absolute terrible situation, and people leapt into action, and members, before I could even sort of place a call to, re to start raising money, days after I had heard, the great people from uh, Artificial Turf Grass Liquidators called and said that they would take care of the entire thing for free. And give them a big round of applause for that, because that's really <laughs> special. So we're here to do two things. We're here to thank all of the volunteers for the Tahunga Little League. You all know that putting our youth first, putting them in sports, making them develop their character, learn uh, sportsmanship, play with one another uh, really is something that's incredibly important. And the people who do that from the Tahunga Little League board, represented today uh, by them, is Joe Meadows and Steve Goen. Uh, they do a tremendous thing, and so we owe them a real thank you for doing that. But we also want to thank Dylan uh, Georgian, founder of the Artificial Grass Liquidators, and the rest of his staff for donating and installing and replacing the turf that was stolen. And they're going to provide one year of maintenance for the, uh, the facility. They are based out of Woodland Hills, if I'm not mistaken. We'll, we'll have a little bit more information about who uh, and where they are. But first, I'd like to bring up representatives from the Tahunga Little League to say a few words. Hmm. Hi, good morning. Um, Tahunga Little League has been uh, serving the Foothills community of Sunland Tahunga uh, for a little over 40 years. Um, I personally have been um, coaching out there for 10, uh, been on the board for about six. And yeah, we basically um, teach kids between four and 14 years old uh, how to play ball. Um, this field that was stolen was for the younger group of kids, um, all T-ballers, four, five, and six-year-olds. Um, and as he mentioned, it was stolen um, a few months ago. Uh, so I want to uh, personally thank um, AGL, um, Artificial Grass Liquidators, uh, for helping us replace that and giving the kids uh, of that younger crew uh, a new place to play and practice during the year. Uh, so I'll turn it over to them. I want to, as you complete it, I want to make sure I call on Mr. Weston, the coach, in a second. Do you, Mr. Felipe, uh, Mr. Fuentes, want me to allow them to go first? In fact, just let me jump in to just thank you from the bottom of my heart. My entire adult life, I spent coaching something. Pop Warner football, baseball, basketball at the local YMCA, and I agree with Mr. Fuentes where it relates to the importance of those endeavors. 
And I also can remember that I had uh, a uh, artificial turf placed on a football field uh, that our high school and local Pop Warner folk used for years. And you should have just seen the faces of the children because they were like professionals. They just, they, there was a pride and to, to, I can't even comprehend that anyone would come and to take that away from the children. I'm sure that another 24 hours, I guarantee you, Mr. Fuentes would have fixed it but that you guys jumped in at no prodding to do this as a company says a lot about each and every one of you. So just as a man, I want to look and say to you, well done. And I appreciate it, and so do the children. Thank you. Let's give them the type of applause that they truly, truly deserve. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Dylan. I'm the founder of Artificial Grass Liquidators. And I just want to give a thank you to my whole team coming together with this and put in their time and effort and their good heart to do it. Uh, God's blessed our company so much, and we're out here to bless others and give back to our community. Um, nothing's better than seeing a smile on these kids' face. Nothing. I can tell you that. Nothing. So uh, thank you so much for having us out here, and thank you for the award. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Colleagues, I just wanted to say officially to all of you, both for the members of the Tahunga Little League, thank you for what it is that you do. You're shaping the city of Los Angeles. It's our youth. It's their future. And to Dylan and the team at Artificial Grass Liquidators, this is a tremendous business, and uh, you do very good work to make Los Angeles resilient, but to also uh, fortify all of our faith and belief in good citizens, stand-up businesses. Thank you very much on behalf of the city of Los Angeles. Give them a big round of applause. Big hand. Big hand, Mr. Fuentes. Thank you. Mr. Walsh, item six. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org or J. Walsh Confidential and tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Um, new posting up at, at J. Wells Confidential. This is uh, item six, public hearing. This is the uh, rent escrow account program. Remember, those people out there, if your landlord is violating and has, these are landlords that have had uh, violations, uh, code violations, go to the city. The city does a good job, and the city will start collecting your rent, not the landlord. Now, sometimes the landlord is... Uh, uh, accused unjustly and then they come here and it's taken off. We've helped landlords and we've helped tenants. But the most important thing you have to know now is that all these uh, uh, cases that you must report to the city any violation of your landlord, by your landlord. HollywoodHighlands.org. That's the last card we have. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. No speakers on the queue. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Next item, Madam Clerk. Item nine, call special for cards. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighland.org. This, as you know, the city owns enormous amounts of property in Los Angeles, 
more than most other cities in America. And uh, they acquired it uh, when it was open land many years ago. What they do is for favored corporations, they sell the land at bargain basement prices to, and here, this is, uh, this is a 6,000 Jefferson Boulevard. The city, is, you're not gonna believe this, the city is selling at a, a bargain price uh, the a property to International Coffee and Tea. The coffee, corporate parent of coffee, bean, and tea leaf for development. In other words, your streets are falling apart, buildings are exploding, and we have the ATF in here, we have the FBI in here on East LA gangs, and what are we doing here? We are selling off our precious city property to the, as I said, the Jefferson, uh, on Jefferson Boulevard to the coffee bean and uh, value at seven and a half, seven million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I've asked around. This property is priceless. However, on the open market, if you didn't have a special deal with the city, coffee, uh, the coffee, <coughs> that kind of property would cost about fifteen million dollars. They're getting a deal, and we're getting shafted. HollywoodHighlands.org for the truth. Jay Walsh Confidential. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, do you see a name on this? Mike Marshall, thank uh, you. What's the name? Yeah. All right, well, please write your name there. Thank you so much. Mr. Herman. Well, in development of the Brown Act, it's really not necessary, right, Mr. City Attorney? Thank you. But economic benefit, are we in an economic benefit or an economic crisis? When it comes to the international coffee and tea development for the city that the public's interest is best, that the city sell your hard taxpaying dollars for this economic benefit. What a bargain, right? As you heard from the first speaker, this bargain is bamboozling all of us to services, programs, and activities that could be rendered the monies of a better sale than another coffee shop. Not that any of you dislike coffee, but I'm gonna hold my time for this one minute. Sip it up, coffee's good for you. All right, that completes the speakers. Let's, uh, no speakers on the queue, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. So ordered. Next item. Item 10, call special for cards. John Walsh. What, you know the number was that, six? Oh. John Walsh, America's least wanted by the LA City Council. Number 10, this concerns biosolids, green acres, land application project. Uh, this has all been fixed up, farm biosolids. Uh, I don't have to go into detail here, but it's an inside deal, and we know what biosolids means. It's pretty smelly, biosolids. Uh, this is my, uh, I, this the time thing is going crazy, but this is my fourth minute. HollywoodHighlands.org. Uh, I don't have time. This is a complex issue, but believe me, it's an inside job. HollywoodHighlands.org. Mr. Herman. Citizens, residents, this Energy Environment Committee has asked for a green acres farm, Villa Salolos, whatever land applicant project, 
And I have to say it in this most hilarious way of saying it because, again, the city of Los Angeles does not address for November 5th, 2014, with the pub with public works report with attached console file agreement in connection with the Green Acres Farm applicant project is. So has the Bureau of Sanitation to file notice and determination with the city county clerk? I believe uh, when uh, Ms. Glory Molina steps into the picture, things will be expressively explained on the findings of this statement for overriding consideration prepared by this action and this motion under the final environmental impact report. So communication from the chair and the energy environment, it's very obvious that it does not comply to the California CEQA, and I won't reiterate, you know, the California Environmental Quality Act, but it is in good interest of the public that the recommendations by the Board of Public Works reports and findings and, and funding for this information should require an audit. An, an audit so that you, the taxpayers, automatically will know whether or not the city, admitty, city administrative officer in his jurisdiction acted on behalf of all you taxpayers and the analyst reports reflect the audit and the administrative public works reports. Thank you. That completes that item. Let's open the roll on this. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Next item, Madam Clerk. Fourth without item 10 with ex expediency. And also, Mr. President, there's a request that's in item nine forthwith also. Three to forthwith to nine to forthwith. Next item is item one, call special for cards. All right, one D, do we have a Barry Lee here? Barry Lee, as well as Brenda Lee, if that's correct. We have department staff at the table, please. Sergeant, we help staff there. You can speak one at a time, and you have two minutes each. Thank you. Barry or Brenda, either go first. Uh, yes, we're here on the, on the, about our property we was charged with unsafety. They wrote us a citation. And uh, we paid for the 300 and something for, for the fine and cleared up the citation. I went down to the office and took care of it and spoke to the man personally. And he said that he was going to remove the rest of the fine. And then uh, last two weeks, I got a notice on my door. I haven't heard anything else about it. I got a notice on my door saying that I still owe a thousand something dollars. I would like to speak to the gentleman that wrote the citation and sent me this notice and have it cleared up. If I can have a postponement to talk to him first. Uh, Billy, does safety have any answer to this? Uh, yeah, um, my name is Charles Caribala. I'm from Beauty and Safety, uh, representing the department on item uh, one. Uh, I've already talked to the property owner, and the owner appears to be an uh, owner occupied single family a dweller, he lives in the property and he, she owns it. And according to departmental uh, procedures, we cannot lend this property. So we request that we continue this item up to January 14th while the inspectors take a closer look at this case. So ordered by Mr. Wesson. Thank you. We're going to continue this to January, work with the department, with Council District 8, Mr. Park's office, to try to make resolution. Thank you so much. Uh, and Mr. So, President, uh, for the record, that's item 1D. That's 1D continued. 1D continued to give January you time 14th. to try to justify what you said. Okay. Thank you. Jesus Zamoro. Jesus. He's gone. Thank you very much. 
John Wallace. And while he's coming, Mr. President, there's a request to continue item 1J to January 14th. Yes, so ordered. Thank you. One minute, Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or J. Walsh Confidential and tweeting at Hollywood Dems. It's my experience, and I've been coming here since oh, 1985, uh, that when you continue a lean, that means you drop the lean, okay? I'm still waiting to see someone come up here and say, you continued my lean and now my lean hasn't been, uh, uh, is the same as it was before and I'm here for the second time and I ask anyone who watches this, nobody comes down here for the second lean. When they make a, a big mistake, the uh, a city, they continue the lean and then they drop the lean, Hollywood, which is great. Hollywood, that it's dropped, HollywoodHighlands.org. We work with all these people who come down here, myself and Batman, to uh, stop these uh, uh, illegal liens, HollywoodHighlands.org. Tyrone Wilmington, did I say that correctly, Tyrone? Thank you. How you doing? Uh, um, I don't feel like I, um, well, at the time when this, when I was cited for this, these uh, violations uh, for my yard being messed up, I was in federal prison, so I had no control over what was going on at my property. And uh, now that I have the property back and I'm home, I would like to ask for a continuance so I can get with the inspectors. So Thank you very much. We're going to so order that. Representative Billy and Safety Charles. Uh, yeah, I've talked to the gentleman again. Uh, he claims he was in prison at the time. The inspections were done, so we are continuing it, requesting continuation to January 14th, where we take a look at it. Also, it's owner occupied, it's, uh, owner occupied single family dwelling. We cannot place liens on owner occupied single family dwellings. We will have to examine, examine it and then come back and. Got it. Come. So it will be continued. You may want to meet on the side to get the full uh, program. Last card. Thank you. Mr. Herman. And Mr. President, just for the record, that's item 1E, continue to January 14th. Uh, that's correct. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Speaker, addressing the issues on the lien, we're all aware that the law prohibits enforcement without due process. There has to be provisions not to allow your constituents to be harmed by the process of these liens. I, I read here from uh, CD8, 825 West 106th Street, $1,000 lien as in discussion. And the current business at 1122 West 65th Street, another condition by Mr. Parks, who on two occasions has not appeared to hear his constituents demand and ask for a process called certified mail. Is that so much to ask? Is that being unreasonable? Is that being unreasonable for a lien to be addressed with the process of due process? So many of you Angelinos, as you hear and want to address your liens, you must come here and stand before this council, your representatives, and not just demand, but ask for reasonable accommodations to waive the interest charges that are the problem of these citations. I know for a fact that many of you are willing to pay, willing to pay the lien for the citation, but the obstruction of the law is the interest that you're charging at an enormous amount is taking advantage of your constituents. And so when Diane Feinstein's daughter runs for an election seat, I'm sure she will be in the process to magistrate the law according to due process that in the future, any constituent with a lien will be cleared of an action brought about this council he is not talking to, about this. To item. notify them. You've got to speak specifically. 
Okay, so then again, Mr. Parks, when your constituents are here from 825 West 106th Street, I ask that you... All right, that completes your time. Madam Clerk, on these issues here, the balance, do we have anything on the balance? Yes, Mr. President, there are items left to vote on. All right, let's vote on them. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. 11 ayes. Next item. Mr. President, that brings counsel to general public comment. Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman is not here. Residents of Los Angeles, as you all were reading and, and hearing, the assembly of this fire downtown was not just an action of a few people. It's still being investigated. But however, I'm here to talk to you about the Special Olympics on July 25th, that the city of Los Angeles will be receiving $2.6 million in federal defense money to repair and fix our sidewalks and streets. Isn't that great? So that athletes, disabled people, or persons with a disability will have access and accessibility to safer sidewalk and streets throughout Los Angeles. And then again, as a reminder, these ropes are a barrier and a violation of the law, Mr. City Attorney, because again, Judge Ferguson ruled that why such a segregation and a separation of this body? Thank you. Fourth with on number five for Mr. Blumenfield. John Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Remember to vote uh, next year for Grace Hugh to replace Herb Wesson on the city council. Now, as you know, there was a, an explosion, uh, multiple explosions that destroyed, sent the... Uh, uh, a building in Hollywood, I mean, a building downtown, into, uh, blew it up in, in five seconds. Now, uh, the Da Vinci building. You, Mr. Weezar, said it was a couple of black guys trying to start a fire with cardboard. But the federal government immediately, the day after the uh, uh, Monday, after the Sunday uh, explosion of the building, announced they were bringing in ATF. They have not ruled out terrorism. They have sent in 30, three zero ATF agents to investigate this fire. There are thousands of fires. Why this one? ISIS started. Ryan Bahas. Yes. Lots of things are said by this individual in this chambers, but I certainly didn't uh, say anything that he referred to it as in, in his Absolutely. comments. Thank Absolutely. Thank you. All right, um, I got, uh, I guess, the announcement of our December 20th event. Again, this is community room uh, behind the South Pasadena Library. Call 323-559-1867. This is for the U.S. Must Join BRICS on December 20th. Uh, the other announcement, why the United States must join the BRICS a new international order for mankind. You could get the uh, pamphlet online on LaRouchePack.com. Uh, but I think it should be relevant where this country has been going since Bush. Uh, the CIA torture report clarifies that these are Nazi crimes. That is, the CIA actually took the handbook of Gestapo tactics to torture, as Senator Feinstein said, they did torture. And I would say that uh, she used the word never again, and I do suggest this uh, never again. Liz Renee. Hi, it's Leah Renee. Hi, um, I'm addressing today's Bloomingfield Galpern presentation. They stated that there is no money to repair city infrastructure. I bring to your attention once again, once again, for two years, I bring to your attention that the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety calls dwellings that have been demolished as still existing, which permits builders to circumvent 
uh, California Revenue Tax Code 7080, 70 A and B. I calculated this one weekend alone, it was $2 million missing to the general fund. $2 million missing to the general fund because you call one wall still existing. That has resulted in substantial injury in the city where I own property. You wanna fix your problems. I don't understand, excuse me. You know, I'd really appreciate you be present when I'm talking. If I spend four hours down here waiting to be heard, it's only fair that you listen to me. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate that too. <laughs> Mr. Castro. Um, I'm from Brazil. I'm here in Los Angeles uh, to help develop a better relationship between uh, both cultures. And I understand that Brazilians are not very much here in the scene. And I have been here. In, I'm here for five years, and I have seen a lot of times on the news, and that is missing water in the system in South California. And I haven't seen many actions on that. So the only thing I can do is come here and ask if anyone would like to support me on that because I have people that can do it. And I just don't understand much the how to go around here in Los Angeles. And I'd like to offer my service to the city. And Thank you very much. Mr. Kataya, would you meet him over on the side? Give him some direction, please. Thank you so much. You made over here on this side. That completes the speaking comment. Go over to the side where the sergeant is. The finest of all finest legislative analysts will give you some direction. Any other uh, items right before us, madam? Mr. President, council has motions for post and referral. So ordered. Announcements. Mr. Wesson. Yeah, I think that this would be an appropriate time to remind the members of this body that on Tuesday, uh, it was, uh, we were instructed to all wear a bizarre, colorful, ugly, or whatever tie, just festive or what have you. So I'm just reminding people on Tuesday this Tuesday before we go to recess that we have these this request. Now, I'm hopeful that Mr. Busca, Buscaino can get up and indicate what you did to make everybody's life easier for this coming Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. 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 Joey B. Yes, to help with your tie selection, um, we, I, my office, I provided you all with um, a festive tie to wear on Tuesday. and. Um, here you go, Mr. Cedillo. Yeah. And uh, it's with great hope that you wear this tie on Tuesday. It's not a, like a you shall, you're not being ordered, but um, to make, a, you know, make it easy on you to decide what to wear on Tuesday, there's a tie right before you. And, and Ms. Martinez, we provide you with something um, different than a tie. Special. Something special, right, oh, if you got that. There you go. So that is Hollywood, Mr. O'Farrell, like that. So with that, it's our token of our appreciation on behalf of CD15. Um, it's a great year, and um, it's going to be a better one in 2015. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Last, last thing, Mr. President, last thing. And members, uh, I, I want to be serious on this to, to give a, uh, a thank you. Uh, today uh, is my mother's birthday, God rest her soul. And yesterday, we had a grand opening for a park in my district that was named after my mother. And the beauty of this is no one told me. And so it wasn't until the groundbreaking that I actually knew that the community with uh, uh, city staff came together to do this. So I wanted to, on Channel 35, thank the community thank Reckon Parks, thank Lonnie, and thank 
everyone involved in this. It has to be the greatest gift that I have ever received. So all of, to all of the city folk and the community people, God bless you and thank you so very much. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was special. There's nobody like our mothers. It's very special that you do that. Announcements? Colleagues, just wanted to remind everybody that the 47th annual Pacoima Holiday Parade is this Saturday. It begins at 9 a.m. on Van Nuys Boulevard between Haddon Avenue and Herrick Avenue. Santa, I'm told, is going to be there as well. Uh, we're going to have grandstand seating for folks. And uh, keep up with everything that's happening in Pacoima by checking out our hashtag Celebrate Pacoima. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements to Cidio? Yes, I want two announcements. One is to reiterate that tomorrow, Mr. Wiesar is the um, 33rd annual Miracle on First Street, led by Daniel Hernandez and the uh, Hollenbeck Youth Center. Starts at night, 9 a.m. on First Street between Chicago and St. Louis. And then in addition, I want to acknowledge a, a, a birth date for a dear friend of mine and a friend of many people here on the floor. Uh, Felipe Placencia, believe it or not, turns 49 uh, tomorrow. A graduate of uh, Fullerton, a classic immigrant story. A graduate of Loyola Law School, attended the Trial Lawyers College, and one of the premier trial lawyers uh, in the state, one of the most generous men you'll ever meet. And as he says, uh, good lawyers aren't cheap. Cheap lawyers aren't good. Thank you, Mr. Happy birthday, Felipe. Happy birthday. Any other announcements? Mr. O'Farrell and I will be at Silver Lake tomorrow at 9.30 for the 110th anniversary of the Reservoir. It's going to be a wonderful day in the Echo Park Parade, Mr. O'Farrell. Yes, as Mr. Cedillo mentioned Wednesday, just to tag along, since it's one more day, it's tomorrow um, at, uh, yeah, the, the parade is 11 o'clock in Echo Park, the annual community parade. Uh, so that's going to be a fun event, and the weather looks like it's cooperating. And also um, at Fire Station 6 tomorrow is my office's toy giveaway, uh, collaborating with Los Angeles Fire Department at Station 6 there at uh, 326 Virgil, and that begins at about uh, 1 o'clock. Virgil Avenue right next to the Hollywood Freeway. Plenty of parking. Right. Mr. Cedillo. One last one. Uh, since uh, mm -hmm. we can complete our, our day, you can see what we're doing tomorrow. Uh, the Justice for Janitors will also have their toy giveaway over at their headquarters over on Washington Boulevard. Thank you very much. Any adjourning motions? Yes, we have an adjourning. All rise for adjourning motion. Sergeant? Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, uh, it is with great sadness that one week ago today I heard of the sudden and unexpected passing of Keith Gordon. Uh, Keith Gordon was, um, in addition to a friend of mine, a personal friend of mine, um, also was a long-term employee of Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department, um, as well as part-time worked with Andrews International as part of the security team for the Hollywood Business Improvement District. Keith was a father of three daughters, Kelsey, Brianna, and Aaron, and grandfather of three grandchildren. Um, I worked with Keith when I was brand new in the, um, on the staff of my predecessor in 2002. And Keith was the kind of city employee that was a specialist. So if a council office had um, a really vexing problem that just couldn't, you wouldn't want to go through the proper channels and the proper timelines because it, it was an urgent matter, Keith Gordon was the one you called. And I remember uh, one case in particular in Echo Park. Uh, with a multifamily uh, dwelling where there was this unholy li alliance between the manager of the apartment building and a gang member who lived in one of the units and who was basically terrorizing all the other residents, uh, utilizing their garages. And he was uh, in particular, uh, of particular concern, was one of the uh, residents there was an, uh, a gay man who's uh, English was not his first language, and he felt very threatened uh, and was bullied. And so uh, Keith uh, and I and the senior lead officer paid a visit to this apartment building, and just make a long story short, the problem was solved instantly. 
That's the kind of service that a good city employee, a good inspector will do uh, with the council offices. Um, he also uh, worked very closely way back in the day with Mayor Hahn and his city service committee. And um, I worked with him throughout Glassell Park uh, to help bring property owners into compliance that actually literally improved the look and the safety and the feel of that community. Keith Gordon was an amazing uh, city employee and friend. Uh, he was also a lifetime learner. He had over 100 college units, always taking classes throughout his life so he could put that knowledge into his work. Uh, six months ago, he graduated from Los Angeles Fire Department Leadership Academy. Uh, and a network of people that he leaves behind with the fire department, police department, housing, etc., and many, many of our colleagues uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, Keith Gordon was 59, and he passed away uh, last Friday early in the morning, and he will be sorely missed. God bless his memory. Any other adjourning motions? Members, continue to serve the city well with distinction and hard work.